One of the counterintuitive truths that I've learned over years of creating content, making videos, writing blog posts, making images on Instagram, recording podcasts, all the years of doing that, one of the counterintuitive truths that I have to keep coming back to again and again, remind myself and hopefully to remind you if it's useful, is this. I am not a reliable judge of my own creations. You are probably not a reliable judge of your own creations either. So let me ask you this question. Have you ever known a friend, family member, you know, colleague, acquaintance who um, is so proud of their art? Uh, they show it to you. They post it on social media. They, um, you know, they, they're, they're just proud of their art. And it doesn't resonate with you. <laughs> you look at it, you're like, mm. I mean, you could even objectively say, ah, it's not that it's not very good. But of course, they're proudly showing it to you. So uh, what are you going to do? You're going to say, oh, yeah, that's great. Oh, my gosh. It's, you know, so and then, by the way, same thing with you. Have you ever been so proud of something you've created and you've proudly shown it to the world and you're just so surprised that people aren't, you know, climbing over each other to say, this is amazing. Please, can I have one? And I'm going to have a copy of this or something like that. Well, it's happened to me plenty of times, both situations. And I was uh, talking with um, a fellow, uh, well, someone else who's an artist as well. And um, I was talking to her about the situation. And she said, well, George, everybody fancies themselves an artist. Everybody fancies themselves to be an artist. Yeah, I was like, yeah, that's so true, right? That is the problem of the dynamic of creating something. And it, the more, here's the, here's the, uh, the frustrating and counterintuitive truth about this. The more time and energy you spend creating something, the more bias you have towards this thing must be good. I mean, I have spent 15 hours creating this thing. I have spent 15 weeks creating this. I mean, the more you become invested in the details of, well, it, it took me, it took me quite a while to come up with this particular angle, you know, in this, in this uh, piece of art, or my gosh, I, I was really stuck on this aspect. And I was able to break through after hour number 28, or something. And those those little breakthroughs along the way of creating a piece of art, all are so important to you, because those were that journey of ups and downs and creating one single piece is very meaningful to you because you went through that journey. You went through that journey. The person who was seeing it at the end didn't go through that journey. And therefore all they're seeing is the finished piece. I mean, same thing with, you know, movies that we watch, right? How many movies have we seen where they clearly spent a lot of money making that movie? And we're like, that's not a very good, I mean, we, we might even say, objectively speaking, that's not a very good movie. But they spent so, I mean, all the teams that went into creating this thing, right? I mean, they're, I'm sure they're, they, when they made the movie, they were like, this is going to suck. No, they probably really thought it was really great. And, you know, they, they might even say it's great. Anyway, long story short is back to this principle, this counterintuitive truth that I am reminding myself now and perhaps reminding you, we are not reliable judges of our own creation, of our own art, of our own content. Therefore, what does this mean? It means that we shouldn't be the ones to say, what I've created here, ah, it's not so good. I'm not going to release it to the world. Or, my gosh, this thing is going to be really good. Let me spend even more time creating this thing so that I can finally put it out and people are going to love it. How many, how many, uh, maybe this has happened to you. You've created this gorgeous website. You have clarified your calling. You have figured out your niche. You have crafted the most compelling offer, right? And spent months doing that. You're falling into the same trap as any artist and a trap that I myself have gotten into again and again and again, many times over the years. So if, if you fall in that trap, I can relate 
with you and most artists can relate with you. <clears throat> so again, this applies also, like I said, to not just content, but also your own business. And this is why the actionable step to this understanding this truth is to create lightly, to create lightly. This is something I've been saying more and more over the years, and I need to hear it again and again and again. Maybe it'll be helpful for you as well. Create lightly, meaning for any piece of content you put out there, don't invest too much of your energy, emotions, attachment, um, time to, to that piece of content. Create lightly. You have an idea. <clears throat> put that idea together as quickly as you can as lightly as you can, and then put it out into the world lightly as well. With curiosity, I wonder if and this will be impactful and interesting, positively uh, makes making a difference to anybody. I don't know. That is, to me, the posture I've learned to adopt over years of creating thousands of pieces of content and hundreds of products, courses, programs, webinars, um, sales pages, etc. I just say, okay, I put this together. Uh, uh, hopefully, with a little with a little perfectionism and as lightly as possible. Don't spend too much time. That's the danger to say, no, I can make this better. No, of course, it can always be made better. You you think that you made this thing as good as it could be? Sleep on it. Come back overnight, and you'll see errors. You'll see. Uh, imperfections again and again and again. Or you think this thing is really great? Oh, well, well, we'll see what the world says. You'll see what your audience responds to, to, to this. So create lightly. Spend as little time. Boundary yourself. That's the key. Create boundaries for yourself with regards to, okay, I'm writing a blog post. Okay, I'm making a video. Okay, I'm I am creating an offer. The next thing I'm going to be selling out there. This is only how much time I'm going to spend creating it because I know the longer time I spend, the more I'm attached to the results, to what the outcome should be because, oh my gosh, all this energy and time went into this. And if the outcome isn't what you hope for it to be, this is often true with creating launches, offers. Oh my gosh, I'm, I'm going to put this perfect funnel together. Oh, they're going to go through this. I'm going to run ads to get people into the funnel. And by the end of it, so many people are going to buy. The, the longer you, the more time and energy you spend into it, right? The more agony you feel as you launch the thing. And usually, right? Usually, unless you have launched many things and have gotten a really good sense of your market, and therefore you create with perfect alignment with your market, if there's such a thing, usually, you spend all this time creating a, an offer and a launch and you put it out there and all you hear is crickets, crickets, <laughs> nobody, no humans, only crickets, like in the silent of the silence of the night, you know, there's nobody's coming over and they say, Oh my, and maybe a few people buy, but you're like, you're in agony of all this launch time that you spend all this effort because you're, you're attached. The agony and the anxiety comes from attachment to the results and the outcome. If you had, if you, if you had created lightly and go, I, I have no idea, right? Again, that's the posture I developed. I have no idea. There, there's that emoji. I want you to look up this emoji and in the future you can think of me, right? There's that emoji of the guy going like this, right? Or the woman going like this, right? That's the posture I adopt for everything I create. I have no idea if this video is going to be interesting or boring or um, life-changing or completely irrelevant to the people who are watching this. I, I genuinely don't know. I mean, I, that I practice not knowing. I practice agnosticism when it comes to the uh, quality of my content and my offers. I'm like, all I know is I need to either to, to both create lightly and to have a rhythm of creating and publishing. That's the takeaway here is that is what I am committed to and dedicate myself to and 
find growth and fulfillment in. It's the process of practicing creating lightly, practicing going, I, I don't know. I'm going to let it go into the world a, 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 a practice of a rhythm of publishing, right? Again and again. What is what is your rhythm of publishing? Now, when I say rhythm, I mean not just your content. You, you might have a have a schedule for publishing your blog posts or your videos or your podcast episodes or whatever. Do not let anything, I don't let anything get in the way of my schedule of publishing content and publishing offers. That is the heartbeat of my business. And that's the heartbeat of your business, your rhythm of publishing. Again, content and offers, two things, content meaning things that are free out there. You put on YouTube videos, you put out podcast episodes, you put out blog posts on your website, you put out uh, Instagram posts, social media posts, whatever. That rhythm, find a rhythm that's sustainable for you and never let anything get in its way. Not illness, not family visiting, not taking care of other people, not anything. You know, when I'm sick, I have made videos like this where I'm literally in bed and, and sitting up in bed. I'm, I'm, I'm bed. I've been bedridden twice in the last six months for a week at a time. Uh, once was you know, a, a stomach thing and once with a foot infection. Anyway, I've been bedridden for an entire week. I mean, with minimum, like go to the bathroom, whatever. And I still made my content during those weeks. The only times I, I don't make content is during my content sabbaticals. You can look up content sabbaticals from me. I have an article about that. I take a content sabbatical every four, about every four weeks, four to five weeks. I am not posting content, as you know, okay? Every four to five weeks, but those are planned. Those, <clears throat> in fact, during those content sabbaticals, I, I, I feel this, I feel this urge to create and to publish, but I'm like, nope, I'm taking a break. I'm letting the land life fallow for a week, right? However, even during my content sabbaticals, I will still stick with my schedule of publishing offers, my schedule of launching, selling something, because everything I sell, again, I practice the posture. I don't know if anyone's going to buy this. I really don't. I sell something. I'm like, I don't know a few people or a lot of people. I'm frequently surprised. I'm like, wow, I spent so little effort launching this thing. And it, well, I should, let me flip it around. I spent so much effort launching this thing and the sales were very much lower than I expected. And then, no, this has literally happened to me in the last two months. So much effort launching this thing and the sales were lower than I expected. <clears throat> I spent less effort launching this thing and the sales were, double what I expected, like way better than the other thing I spent a long time launching. So the longer I'm in entrepreneurship and creativity, the practice of creativity, the more I practice the posture. I don't know. I, I don't, I don't know how it's going to go. All I know is if I practice creating lightly, practice saying, I don't know if anyone's going to like it. And I practice my rhythm of publishing my content and, and launching my offers, I launch at least one offer a month. I sell at least one thing to you per month. Either it's a course or, you know, recently it was a book and or a program or what I sell at least once a month, at least. Rain or shine, vacation or no vacation. Well, of course, I, well, I, I plan my launches throughout the year as well. Um, so I do take vacations, but even if my launch is happening during a vacation, I make sure I schedule that launch to, to go out. Even when I'm taking a break, that launch is scheduled to go out. So anyway, it, please understand that just like your body has a regularity, does your body stay healthier or less healthy when there is no rhythm, right? That you, 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 you don't go to sleep. Uh, at a consistent times, you don't eat at consistent times. You imagine your body systems don't have a rhythm. Imagine your heart doesn't have a rhythm. It's not consistent. You would be sick and you would die. Your your body systems need so much consistency and regularity, just like nature has a has a rhythm, right? It's this is very natural. This is very authentic. This is very according to the Tao, 
with the flow of the DAO, the DAO is very consistent, very regular, right? Very um, reliable, right? Very reliable. Your body, thankfully, hopefully, is reliable with its systems for you. And your business is looking to you for reliability too. So just like you want your heart to keep beating regularly, your business wants your rhythm of content and offers to keep beating regularly. And not, not knowing whether the content or the offer is going to do anything. But you just stay in the curiosity and the lightness of creation and the practice of consistency of just publishing and, of course, taking breaks. But those breaks are planned. And it's wonderful to plan breaks because then you can plan trips with friends, family, by yourself. You can plan to go to, to do particular things during your breaks, whatever. It's nice to plan things. And obviously, life, family visits, sickness happens, trauma happens. But let, let not those things interrupt your schedule. That's called the power of your will. That's called bend the universe to your will. Now, obviously, we, we do both things. It's a paradox. We both bend the universe to our will, but we also flow with the Tao. It's both are true. But too few of us, too few of you, us art-centered people, we all flow with the Tao. I just got to trust God and let things flow. That's very yin, very yin. There, there's a yin and a yang. You have to have both. Both are part of the Tao. Both are part of reality. Don't just let things flow and just go by the whims of your, oh, today I don't feel like it. Oh, today. Then you have no willpower. You have no discipline. And that's discipline is part of the Tao as well. It's also part of the divine order as well. It's to say, no, the divine order is like, Reality is like Play-Doh for you. You get to shape reality however you wish to in partnership with the Tao, in partnership with everything, all the other factors that will bring you surprises. But you continually shape and the reality continually comes back to say, what do you, how are you going to shape us now? Anyway, I hope this is helpful and uh, inspiring to you somehow. And thank you. Thank you so much for watching, joining me on this journey. And I look forward to any comments you'd like to add below if you wish to. Take care. Thank you.